Welcome back to Code Time IO. This is passing data from a Raspberry Pi to a Laravel application. In this video, we're going to show you how we can actually pass data to Laravel. And we're going to essentially take Laravel, and right now it's a sort of CRUD app. You can create, you can read, you can't update, but you can uh, create and you can show the values that you've set. What we want to do next is uh, take this and allow uh, for a specific URL, for example, an API, to pass data to that URL and then uh, store it. So store the audio file and store the path file. So that is what we're after. In order to do this, we're going to need to do a couple things here. Uh, first thing, uh, on this end, it's not too much here in the Laravel instance, if we go to API, these are the API routes, and you can set up a new one by either just copying this one over or just changing the values here. I'm not gonna be setting up auth in this demo, so I'll take off the auth, and it'll just be middleware API get. I wanna change this to a post request. And the idea is here, I'm gonna hit this URL. So API, it's gonna be API slash. I'm gonna set this up as something like memories. And then instead of it returning the request to the user, I will return something like memories controller. Uh, and then I'm gonna say at, and then the store method is just where I want it to go. And that's pretty much all I need to do here, and this is all set up. The next thing, I need to make a new app. And so if I go to new, and I'm in my builds directory here, I'm gonna make a new folder and I'm gonna call this input. And then inside the input folder, I can drag this to a new sublime window. So I'll see two projects essentially now. I'll make a new file in here and I'll title this index.php. Then I could go in here and maybe set up an HTML page, but I really don't need to. Actually, here's one to note. Uh, if you're running there of a valet like I am, index.php can sometimes run into issues with duplications. And I don't know exactly why, and I've tried to debug this for many days and haven't been able to figure out why uh, these things sort of happen with the index.php. I assume because it's running, it's the first page it hits, and for some reason I'm getting double entries. Uh, so just take that, rename that to something else. I'm gonna name it to process.php, and then I'm gonna set up some PHP tags. Cool, so that's what we need here. Our basic is set up. This is the page that eventually we could just take this and put it onto a Raspberry Pi and it would just work. It really is that easy. So we need to get a PHP library and the PHP library we're getting is called Guzzle. Uh, and that's 2ZEL, ZEL, HTTP, uh, yeah. And here is the docs for that. So this is docs.guzzlephp.org. They have a overview section and under that there's an installation. And to do this, you can run composer because you already have composer. Uh, this will be pretty easy. You just skip the composer far on PHP unless you've set it up that way. I have mine set up as just composer. So I'm gonna go back to terminal. I'm going to CD into my input directory. And then inside here, I'm going to say composer and then require a guzzle HTTP guzzle version six. That's going to set up uh, a vendor path and all of that. Meanwhile, I'm gonna grab this require vendor auto load and put it up at the top. Once that's done, I can click over to installation, not installation, to quick start. And here on quick start, it'll show you use uh, some basic examples of how to do this. There are many different ways to do this. And if you look across the web, like everybody has their sort of way that they're using Guzzle. Like some people say, pass it in through the body or send it through as a form request or send it as multi-part or various things or do it asynchronously. It, it's a bunch of different things. Use the base URI, don't use it. it. It really doesn't matter. It's up to you. Find a solution that's going to work and that you understand what's happening. So I'm going to set this up, the basics, and then I'm gonna say something like dollar sign client, and this is pretty much true for all of the way that people do it, is to say client equals new client, and I'll do it parentheses here. Uh, um, then I can set up our response. 
So this is going to make the request. We'll say dollar sign response and is equal to our new client. That's this instance now. And in this instance, we're going to pass in a request. And the request type here, it passes three parameters. The first parameter is the type, the second is the URL, and the third is the data that we're passing. So I'm gonna send this as post data. And again, if we reference back to here, you can see that middleware API post memories, and that's our path. That is a post. So if I come back to this page, it's going to go to a URL that looks similar to this. It just has the word API in front of it because it's on the API uh, routes. So API slash memories. Okay, that's our basic. And then the third parameter is an array. So I'll bring this down like this. And because I'm passing in a audio file to store it, I wanna specify this value as multi-part. And you can look up documentation here on multi-part. So if you did something like multi-part, uh, your request, yeah, this would probably be this. And then you can scroll down, you'll just get different very op like various options for multi-part. Here, we'll link directly to it. And there's an example. So they're saying multi-part and the name and multi-part and the file. And doing it this way, you can actually pass in multiple files if you wanted to, and you can pass in multiple values. So I'm gonna set this up based on our instance that we've been working on. And so this value is going to be, uh, the multi-part is going to be an array as well. And then we, inside of that, we set up, um, a array set value. And that's essentially what we're here. You could even just copy one of these if you wanted to, for example, like I could just grab this and paste it into this instead. And it'll just save me a little bit of time. So here's the name. This is gonna be the name of that input field, which we called audio. So again, that audio name matches with that name. And then the content. So like, what do we wanna store here? I'm gonna say F open. I need to get another audio file. So I'm just gonna go to Sound Bible. And Sound Bible just has a bunch of free sounds. So I'll just say sound effects and uh, sure, muscle car. That sounds great. So we'll click on muscle car and we'll say MP3 download. It's gonna download. Uh, it's probably gonna open up quick iTunes because I clicked it. I hate when that happens. All right. Click on downloads. There's our download file. I'm gonna just put that on the desktop for now. And then I'm gonna go into input and I'm gonna make a new folder called audio. And inside this audio file is where I'm going to store this audio. And I'm gonna just refer to this as like sound.mp3. Okay, so now let's imagine this audio came from something like a mic on a Raspberry Pi or something else that you're doing on the Raspberry Pi. Then here where it says contents, that's always gonna be called contents and this is always gonna be name. It's gonna say F open, that's a PHP command to open up a specific file. So we'll say audio slash and sound.mp3. That R is for read uh, as we're going to read this file, not write to the file. Okay, that part's pretty much set. We need to set up another chunk. So the same thing here, we could say name and contents and kind of just paste it here. This time it's not gonna be a file F open. It's going to be, uh, for our instance, something like happy, and the name field would be mood. Uh, then I could do another one here, and this one is going to be name field, is going to be name, right? This is the name that I'm going to call it. And uh, I will give this something like uh, muscle car sound, because that's what we called it. So muscle car sound makes me happy, I guess. Uh, so then audio, mood, name, uh, those are all set up. Note that I didn't pass in the path, so this should be all good to go. So now if I go to our URL for something like input.test and then slash process.php, and before I hit that URL, I wanna go to SQL Pro and show you here that I have no memories currently in this folder. And now if I, and I'm gonna go up a directory and make sure I get rid of all of the 
stuff in uploads. I'll just delete the uploads folder altogether. All right, so here we go. Let's see if we were able to do this successfully. I'm on this page here, so input.test. Imagine this is on your Raspberry Pi right now, but it's really a separate server, separate URL. I hit enter. It says 404 not found, and that is because I spelled process wrong. So expect it on the line 24. So we need a semicolon there. Now I'll refresh and I'll see a white screen because I don't have any success notices or anything like that. But if I go over to here, I should see an uploads directory. I don't see anything there. And if we go to our database, we do see a uh, muscle car slash happy and slash all of that stuff. So that's all good. Looks like the path didn't work. I might have been testing something earlier, so let's just go look inside that controller. So I will go to HTTP, controllers, and our memories controller, and yeah, I had a bunch of stuff I was testing for. So let me just clear this up really fast. We'll say, that's all good. Here's our original. That's what you had, and you should have something that looks like this. So memory equals new memory, memory name, memory path, memory mood save, uh, memory path, and we can do this as update, doesn't really matter. Save, store as memory, and the path. Okay, so now let's hit this again. We should see two records, so the muscle car in the second one, but this one has the audio file. Now if we go back to our document and refresh, you'll see this is the one we did before. I had this all messed up, but this one's good, so I will delete this one. And this one's, that's the correct one. And now if I click on it, and there's the muscle sound of the car, it's happy, it's 17 seconds ago. And I was able to pass that from an entirely different page. And that was this process.php using Guzzle. So you can see this is pretty easy once you have your entire infrastructure, everything set up. Otherwise, it's a lot, right? Because you don't have the data yet. And you don't know where to do with the data and pay, like sort of position or place the data. So that's covering uh, the actual script. And really at this point, you could just take this and put it into the Raspberry Pi and you could run it. And what I wanna show next is uh, sort of a way to do this. And, and I'm gonna just pull out a Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna run this script on it real quick and I'm gonna show you how this works. So let's go ahead and take a look at that in the next episode.